Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the PAC for another wonderful year at our university. I'm Jennifer Mullen. In my real life, I'm a faculty member, but I'm just filling in right now as chief of staff. It is my honor to introduce to you the president of Colorado State University Pueblo, Dr. Leslie DeMond. Welcome to the 2013-2014 academic year at Colorado State University, Pueblo, also known as Thunderwolf Country. Yeah. Thank you for being here today as we greet one another, welcome new colleagues, and salute our community leaders for their continued support. This year we recognize the 80th anniversary of CSU Pueblo. Eight historical decades of providing a quality education to almost 40,000 graduates. Our name and location have changed a few times in the past 80 years, but our commitment to students and their success remains at the forefront of what we do. Welcome back. Speeches should be welcoming and generate enthusiasm about the year ahead, and I hope this one will do that for you. Nonetheless, we will face challenges throughout the year. I hope you will attend our State of the Unity of Univers University Address on September 25th, when I will discuss the issue of Pueblo's challenges and opportunities in much greater detail and talk about the institution in the context of higher education nationally. However, I would like today to highlight some of the exciting achievements accomplished this past academic year, as well as goals for the new year. With great anticipation, we are kicking off a $25 million capital campaign through the CSU Pueblo Foundation, which will be announced formally on Thursday, August 29th, here in the ballroom at 11 a.m. And I really hope that you can all be here to support our foundation and those folks who are working so hard to raise money for our institution. I want to thank Foundation President Dan DeRose CEO Todd Kelly and his hardworking staff, the Foundation Board and the Capital Campaign Committee for their dedication and hard work, which will move our campus forward. The campaign will raise funds that, most importantly, provide scholarships for our students. As well, these funds will support academics and athletics. Much of what we accomplished this year has been supported by the CSU system, Chancellor Michael Martin, who is here today with us. And the Board of Governors. I especially want to thank Dennis Flores for all he's done since becoming a governor himself. Parallel with Foundation's goals, I am pleased to announce the new Institutional Merit Scholarships we've created and which will be offered to next fall's freshman class. We hope to attract even more academically strong students by providing these substantial scholarships. In addition to the benefits of these packages, students are now able to access a complete breakdown of what they owe the university. I'm sure they're thrilled about that. <laughs> and what they expect to receive in terms of financial aid. Staff members in financial aid, the registrar's office, IT, and finance and administration have worked tirelessly this year to create a new screen and easy access to that screen. Now that might sound simple, but I can assure you it is not. And the staff members in those units, I call them up to my office on a regular basis. They drop everything that they're doing. They never complain. They always ask what it is that we think could work and they work with us. And I cannot thank them enough. We truly are student-centered. And they have worked very hard this year to provide that centeredness. And I want to thank each and every one of them. <laughs> you are also going to see quite a few changes to the physical campus this, this year. We're beginning the first stage of construction on our new academic classroom building that will be located just west of the chemistry building. 
It will offer the newest technology and reflect environmentally sound practices. We owe a tremendous gratitude to Senator Angela Sarone for her leadership on the Capital Development Committee in securing the funding for this project. You will be pleased to know that we're also, finally, renovating the Oceana University Center in which you sit at this moment. <laughs>
We're very proud to have been recognized this year as a member of President Obama's Higher Education Community Service Honor Roll for our community partnerships at all levels of the university. Through the University Budget Board, the campus continues to identify ways to assess the performance and viability of all of our programs and units. The members of this board committed hours of time last year to making difficult recommendations to me and the cabinet regarding budget cuts, reallocation of funds, and restructuring. And I thank them for that. They willingly accepted the most difficult job on campus, sitting in a room week after week, looking across a table at their colleagues and friends, knowing that their final recommendations could damage years of collaboration and perhaps create wounds that might never heal. As your president and as a faculty member who experienced the loss of a program at a former institution, I know the pain of these decisions. But if we are not all a part of this process, publicly and transparently, our critiques, no matter how valid, may go unheeded. Again, my thanks to the individuals who serve on this very important board. Our commitment to diversity continues as we search for a full-time director of diversity and inclusion, supported by our students through their student fees. The individual who is appointed will work closely with our university and community to ensure that our commitment to diversity is tangible and evident on our campus. A belief in diversity not only includes communicating our pride in being a Hispanic-serving institution, it also means that we must maintain our commitment to academic programs and services that support underrepresented students. Customs and traditions are embedded in our university's curriculum. Two new concurrent enrollment courses allow our students to experience the art and beauty of the ballet folklorico and the masterful sounds of the mariachi. Diversity also manifests by reaching all corners of the globe. Our current partnerships with Italy, Korea, and Germany continue to thrive. This year, we also welcome large student contingents from China, Brazil, and Latin America. Dr. Lily Chang, a world-renowned opera singer from China, joins us this year as a visiting professor in the music department, along with acclaimed musicians Daniel Lentz and Dr. Zahari Nekov, who are full-time faculty members at the university and members of the Pueblo Symphony. Our students are fortunate to have such expertise in their classrooms. Equity and parity across the campus must always receive attention. Therefore, I have commissioned an equity study with the firm of Fox and Lawson, and it will be initiated this fall. Finally, I, I want to say how honored I am to continue to serve as your president telling the story of CSU Pueblo, which includes students, faculty, staff, and the community. We all know that in life, people join us and they leave us. But memories do not, and you have created 80 years worth of those memories. Happy anniversary, Colorado State University Pueblo, and welcome back to the pack. <laughs>